Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup where we're going to cover the games that took place at Worlds 2022 play-ins, uh, knockout stage day one or knockout stage. Uh, we had our two best of fives between the three and four seed in Group B, three and four seed in Group A, and uh, now we have determined what is going to happen tomorrow. Down in the description you see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships, Twitter, follow me there, you get the links to all my videos, um, Discord, you will also get informed when I upload on the new uploads channel and you also can participate in a chat where everybody talks about the games as they're going on and various other league related topics um in the description as well will be youtube memberships three dollars supports me you get a badge in the comment section i'd really appreciate it ten dollars you get a badge in the comment section as well as extra content that includes a video that will come out after this one where i go over who i think will win these two series i'm going to go over my preview of them, um, but I will not give you my winner. My winner will be in the members only video. So that's in the members only section as well as NFL American football content, which I do a couple days a week. So if that interests you, that is at that tier. Now, Mad Lions and Saigon Buffalo. I went 0-2 today, and I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not going to lie. I went 0 for 2. And um, it was 100% thinking with your heart instead of your mind. I've been a fan of Saigon Buffalo since MSI. I've said it all the time. If you're new to the channel, you don't know this, but uh, Saigon Buffalo and I got off to a rough start at MSI. And um, I loved the way that they played the game. Um, I loved their aggression and no fear style. And um, so I was rooting for them. I was rooting for them in this, in this um, tournament. I won't, you know, sugarcoat it. I do not really have a favorite team. Um... But I was rooting for Saigon Buffalo's style to prevail. I like the vibe that they give to the game. Now, they lose 3-1. Niski, 17-7, 27-31% of the team's damage. Alyoya, 18-6-30 in the jungle. Shogun, 11-9-15, and 15, 26% of uh, Saigon Buffalo's damage. Bean J, 13-15-20. and 20. So what does that say about Saigon Buffalo? Why would Bean J's... KDA, which is negative, be the second best KDA on the team. Well, they just, they looked awful. They really did. The game they won was with a vain top lane. And I'm not going to lie, that's the sort of stuff that I like about the VCS. I like that they're willing to do crazy things. But that was the really only crazy thing they did. Um, sure, they pulled out a Morgana in game one, but I mean, it was Kate Morg or whatever. So really, what did it matter? Um, it's still in the box. Is it a good pick right now in this meta? No, but it's in the box, right? We all know what a Kate Morg uh, bot lane is like. But Mad Lions just outplayed them. El Yoya was all over the place. And yesterday in my preview, I did say the jungle matchup was going to be the big deal for Mad. If they wanted to win, El Yoya would have to do it. And he did indubitably. Um, Niski also got all around the rift and got on Froggy pretty easily. Um, Froggy... I, a lot of people don't like Froggy. I, I honestly believe Bean J is worse than Froggy, but I can see the argument. Um, both players were outclassed in this best of five. Really, the drafts were pretty bad, too. First draft was 4 AP, which a little heavy on the AP, especially when your AD carry is Caitlyn, so it's kind of, you know, not the best situation for trying to um, carry a game. Um especially as the only AD damage. Um, I just, I mean, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. The, the, they should have been able to swap drafts a bit, um, get freaky a bit more. Um, I know I think they had Lily at top once, but that looks like actually a pick that might just exist. Um, if pe people are willing to play it, I think Lily is viable. But, um, you know, outside of that, Mad Lions just beat them out right. Niski, like I said, all around the rift. El Yoya, all over the place. He got Hecarim. He got Bel He pulled out the Belvath a couple times, which is going to be a vibe for tomorrow. I don't really see it as much of a threat tomorrow, but who knows? Mad and EG might have been scrimming each other across, um, you know, the last couple weeks because they were evenly matched or so um, and not in the same, you know, group, so... It's, it's feasible that that could have come from their, you know, little mini meta that they might have formed. Um, but outside of that, I mean, Botlane, Unforgiven, pulled out the Seraphine once. 
you know, um, and really didn't get gapped all that bad. Like Shogun did not look very aggressive in this one. There were definitely moments where he seemed to be hesitant. And that is not the Shogun that I'm used to seeing. I will say this team is very young. The stage could have been too much. I mean, it is entirely possible that the stage was too much for them. Their back was against the wall and they crumbled. It is it is a thing, right? So uh, Mad Lions moves on to tomorrow. Um, Saigon Buffalo, your season is done. Um, on Wednesday, I'm going to go over the teams um, that are out. You know, my vibe. My vibes from play-ins. And speaking of teams out, uh, Loud lost to DFM 3-1. Another team I was rooting for, not because of the team specifically, but because of um, the CB Lull fans. The Brazilian fans are very passionate, and it is unfortunate that they have fallen to Japan's representatives in DFM. Utapan 34-8 and 20, 29% of damage. Yaharung 22-11 and 27 for DFM. Brant 16-11, 16 for Loud, 29% of damage. And Robo 17, 20, and 18. So, what is the vibe from this one? Well, hmm. Similar to how Saigon lost, Loud really couldn't draft very well in this one. Um, you know, pulled out a, a, a Caitlin Morgue themselves, I'm pretty sure, or at least a Morgue, um, and it did not look very good. Um, well, there was that. There was the Seraphine for Brants, which is not good. They did that during groups, and I had said, don't do this again. This is not the pick for him, and they did it again, and they looked awful in that game. And then the last game, they picked Ezreal as their only damage dealer, really, and they lost because of that. So I'm going to say that Draft really screwed them against DFM. They were very close in Game 1. Um, they tied it up in Game 2, right? Loud Did Loud win Game 1 or Game 2? Game two is the Olaf game, wasn't it? Or was it game one? And I don't know if they won the Olaf game. I'm mixing all my games up. Um, but there was um, a situation where Robo carried on Olaf. He was a menace on the champion. And a lot of people said, oh, his Olaf is nasty, this and that. And I mean, it's not only he was good at Olaf, but he was maybe probably too aggressive. There was a point he's like seven, six, and three on it. And it's like, okay, you're just going in and dying now. Like, you're not even like... You know, you're just trading one for one. And if you're going to be the guy trying to carry this game, you need to be more than a guy trading one for one, right? Um, so, EV had a lot more re uh, relevance. He was on a NAR a couple times. Definitely once, but I believe a couple times he was, you know, very impactful. Um, I will say Steel and Croc, both Korean imports. Um, Croc was able to steal a couple, well, it's funny, steal a couple objectives from Steel. But I will say Steel played the jungle role outside of that better than Croc. Croc definitely um, did not, you know, um, step up to the plate in this one. Didn't step up to the plate yesterday. And you could tell after the game that it had gotten to him that he got emotional. Because I think he realized as much as everybody else did that he was on Struggle Street in this one. Which, you know, it is what it is. It splits over. Um, you know, this is a big deal for him. Being born in Korea, living in Brazil. I mean... I don't know where else he's been, but he's probably, you know, been all over the place, right? And he finally got to Worlds, got an opportunity, and, you know, this is what happened. Uh, mid lane, Yaharung really gapped Tinones. There was a moment in game one or game two where Tinones was down 60 CS at like 15 or 16 minutes. I mean, Yaharung is a great, great um, laner when it comes to mechanically getting his farm. His farm is his. He does not lose does not miss many cannons you're not giving him many uh minus ones in the chat like that's not a thing that yaharung is going to have happen to him he gets up and farm he gets ahead of his laner um and then later on he is relevant and that happened in this one um as tin owns was kind of just like playing galio and things like that trying not to you know lose lane and then not be relevant he was trying to play champions he could stay relevant on and galio really isn't very meta right now so they struggled because of that. Sorry, that probably was loud, but uh, the mic wasn't even facing me properly. Um, AD Carry, Utapon and, and uh, Brant, uh, Utapon and Harp versus Brant and Seos. I mean, it was Utapon. 
all over Brant. Like I said, the Seraphine wasn't a good call. The Ezreal wasn't a good call. Um, the bot lane for DFM were just better. They gave a Yumi over one game. It was just a mess. It was a complete mess out of Loud. They gave DFM an opportunity to succeed. This was going to be very close. I thought it would go five games. And um, DFM just like handled them. They handled them. Um, it was sloppy at times. But they, they took care of business in the end. So that's it for um, that. Now for the sneak peek for tomorrow. Uh, Mad Lions and EG play for a spot at Worlds. Uh, if Mad wins, I think the winner of this goes to Group B. Goes to Group B. Unless, like, the, the miracle happens here, right? Um, if, if DFM beats RNG, DFM will go to Group B. And then they can just send, um, well, if Mad win and DFM win, Mad will just go to Group D, DFM go to Group B. If RNG win, they're going to send RNG to Group D, and then the winner of this to Group B. That's pretty much what's going to happen. So, Mad and EG, they've never played against each other. EG, obviously, relatively new org, has not been to many international events. Mad Lions have been around the block. El Yoya versus Inspired is what we want to watch. This matchup has happened before many a time in um, the LEC. And as both players came up, both um, the faces of the future in the jungle for the LEC and um, Inspired hightailed it out of there to the LCS. And El Yoya is left behind with Mad Lions. So apparently El Yoya has gotten the better of Inspired historically. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I think that this is going to be a very close series. I think it goes five games. Um... Part of me believes there is an advantage for Mad Lions getting this opportunity to lead into this. I think that that is a, a um, advantage. Um, watching somebody play is not quite as advantageous as the extra stage time that you may get, um, you know, in a best of five, especially against a team like Saigon Buffalo, which is a competitive team that's going to make you work for it. It isn't like you're playing. Um, you know, a team that is, is a pushover. Um, you know, top lane impact might be able to beat Armut. He might not be able to because he really doesn't. I mean, he had a great Mordekaiser game. But outside of that, like one good Mordekaiser game, one good Aatrox game. Otherwise, impact's been kind of whatever. Um, jungle is pretty damn close. Mid lane, Niski and Jojo Pune. Two different kind of players. Jojo Pune might be able to beat and out lane Niski, but I think Niski just has been here before and knows how to help his team around him better, get to the side lanes, facilitate two different kind of players. Um, bot lane, we have Unforgiven versus Kaori, so two young 80 carries, Unforgiven with extra time on the rift. However, Kaori in the two tiebreaker games had 22 kills total between the two games against these two. So, um, both have showed up recently, right? Uh, Vulcan and Kaiser, I give the edge to Kaiser, which might be the difference in the bot lane. So um, that matchup is going to be pretty damn close. I think that there's going to be a lot of regional nonsense going on with that one. DFM and RNG, this one, not so close. Um, so never have played before, and I actually had to look back through it because DFM have been to a lot of world uh, events, right? Um, EV, this is his eighth time or ninth time going internationally between MSI and Worlds. But RNG and DFM have never crossed paths. Uh, Yaharung versus Yahoo is what I want to watch. Um, Yaharung, like I said, gapping Tin owns. He's been gapping everybody all, um, all tournament. His laning is very good, and I think that he can get ahead of Yahoo. That does not mean he's better than Yahoo. I just think that he can outfarm Yahoo, um, theoretically. Uh, because he just, he, he's able to outfarm everybody. It's just a matter of um, by how much. And if it's because Yahoo's like, well, fine, if you're going to, I'm going to go on my Talia, I'm going to go on Galio, I'm going to go on TF or something and go to the side lane and gank or roam or do whatever. And Yahoo's like, okay, well, I'll just push the wave in. And like, that's the deal, right? That's, that's the way it is. So that's the matchup to watch. Can Yahoo get ahead and then be relevant and affect the game more than Jahu? Um, I think that that's DFM's best bet. I don't think that they have the edge in bot. I don't think they have the edge in the jungle. Um, top lane, they really don't have an edge. I think their advantage will be that Eevee has some weird stuff he could pull out. And maybe something weird will affect Breathe. Breathe has been playing the weirdest 
opponents thus far, he's the one that had to play the Teemo and the Garen. So, at the same time, maybe he needs, um, I mean, he doesn't need anything. Maybe he's not, he's expecting anything. Okay, Evie, you want to pull out the Urgot? Okay, Mordekaiser? Okay. Lilia? Fine. Like, all this stuff is not going to be a shocker to breathe now that he's played some crazy, crazy crap. So, that's it for the sneak peek for tomorrow. Um, like I said, afterwards, this, I'm going to have a members-only video up where I go over these two a little more specifically about what I think is going to happen, prediction-wise. Um, you can also become a YouTube member um, to be able to watch a video or just support me for $3. Uh, join the Discord for free. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'd appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, I hope you come back for more content.